What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. So we're seeing Hezbollah and their potential 100,000 troops enter the war even more so now, which could trigger the U.S. entering the war even more so in the Israel-Hamas-Gaza war and this whole thing escalating even more. Take a look here. Yeah, from the Jerusalem Post, Israel strikes in Lebanon after Hezbollah rocket barrage. Rocket attacks from Lebanon continue to ramp up as Israel hits back at Hezbollah. Hezbollah, with their 100,000 or so troops, by some accounts less, by some accounts more, depending on who you ask, things are getting escalated even more. And some people are saying that this is going to start to bring in even more so countries. And Iran getting brought into the fray a lot. And will the U.S. be brought into this war full scale? On Friday, Hezbollah terrorists attempted to launch rockets towards Israel territory, the IDF said. Quote, the rockets fell in Syria overnight in response to an IDF fighter jet struck Hezbollah's military infrastructure in Lebanon. Quote, in response to the rockets on the last day, the IDF is now attacking military targets on the terrorist organization Hezbollah in Lebanese territory. And in general, Israel responds proportionately to each attack in the north. Estimates in various foreign media and social media sources, they say that more than 40 Hezbollah members have been killed already in counterstrikes over the last three weeks. On wildfires started by gunfire breaking out in southern Lebanon as clashes between the IDF and Hezbollah intensify. It comes as Iranian terror proxies continue to escalate threats against the U.S. and allies in the region. Senior foreign affairs correspondent Greg Palcott, he's live there in northern Israel for us. Greg, what can you tell us at this hour? Hi, Sandra. Yeah, uh, the latest thing that we heard was small arms fire not too far away from us. We're right up against the Israel-Lebanon border. We've witnessed escalating exchanges between the IDF, the Israeli military, and the Lebanon-based Iran-backed Hezbollah militants. In the last 24 hours, four Hezbollah rockets were fired not far from us, which got 10 return blasts from nearby Israeli artillery. Both sides have been keeping the skirmishes basically near the border, but there are reports of Israel launching fighter jet and drone strikes deeper into Lebanon as the toll grows. 46 Hezbollah fighters killed in the last two weeks, at least six Israeli soldiers, along with civilian casualties. A very telling picture just released, a meeting in Beirut, Lebanon, between a top Hamas official, the leader of another militant group, and the head of Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah, behind them. Pictures of past and present leaders of their benefactor, Iran. Here's what Benny Gantz in Israel's war cabinet said about the fight with Hezbollah. Sahal. The IDF had a thick and very strong shield along the entire northern border on all its fronts. There are significant casualties to Hezbollah. I suggest to our enemy not to get confused. Our power is tremendous, ready to launch, and they better beware. Again, Sandra, this is not a full-scale war, but these skirmishes are deadly, and they're tying up tens of thousands of Israeli soldiers in this region and forcing now estimated about 200,000 civilians to flee on both sides of the border. The IDF has intercepted service-to-air missiles from Hezbollah. On Saturday, the IDF thwarted these missiles, fired from Lebanon at an uh, Israel UAV. Then a terrorist cell fired anti-tank missiles toward Hanita, a community in the hills facing Lebanon on the border. It is not far from the Mediterranean and Shalomi and other communities near Nahari. An IDF drone responded to the attack. Later in the day, there were anti-tank missiles and mortars launched from Lebanon. There were more attacks near Zarit on the border. There have been numerous attacks 
there since October 7th, including one anti-tank missile that hit a vehicle, killing a person, injuring others during the first weeks of the war. Israel carried out retaliation using tanks, artillery, and aircraft. Israel is starting their ground attack invasion in Gaza. It's not really full scale yet. President Biden has suggested Israel should pause this to uh, uh, allow Hamas to allow humanitarian aid to enter Gaza, which... Who knows if Hamas would even allow this. Hamas would probably just gobble up all that humanitarian aid anyways and keep it for their military themselves, most likely. President Biden is going to be signing an executive order expanding capabilities for the government to monitor AI risks. Risks of artificial intelligence to develop new rules for technology that is expected to be issued as soon as Monday that would change the way AI is used in the federal government from healthcare to education, trade, housing, and more, saying, quote, AI artificial intelligence has extraordinary potential for both promise and peril. Responsible AI has the potential to help solve urgent challenges, making our world more more prosperous, productive, innovative, and secure but at the same time, irresponsible use could exacerbate societal harms like fraud, discrimination, bias, and disinformation. This order will put checks on AI, directing agencies to set standards, ensuring data privacy, among other priorities for rapidly evolving technology. Ivanka Trump must testify in her father, former President Donald Trump's New York fraud trial, The judge rules, including Ivanka Trump, who is the daughter, must testify in the New York fraud civil trial. Ivanka Trump, who was once a party in the lawsuit, but a New York appeals court in June dismissed her from the case. However, New York Supreme Court Judge Arthur Engeron decided Friday that her dismissal from the case doesn't absolve her from taking the stand. Trump and his adult sons, Donald Trump Jr. and Eric Trump, are also expected to testify later in the trial. Trump is upset that there is no jury trial in this. The judge explained why there is no jury trial, and that is because his lawyers didn't request a jury trial. That's right. The judge addressed this by saying it keeps coming up, even though, quote, he doesn't read the papers or go online to read about it, saying this about former President Donald Trump. Attorney General Lakeisha James' office checked a box suggesting it would be a non-jury proceeding. Trump's team, Trump's legal team, had 15 days to oppose that, but they did not. So there was no jury trial because Trump's legal team did not oppose it. And so thus there was no jury. Also, now that the Republicans have elected a speaker, Speaker Mike Johnson raises conservatives' hopes for a Biden impeachment. So that will be moving forward albeit probably at a slow pace, we will see. I expect that this will speed up and get hotter towards election time, which is still a year away, believe it or not. There's a whole year until the election. So we will see. You can let me know your thoughts here in the comments. That is my prediction. So if you haven't yet, subscribe down below. Don't forget to hit the like button. I will keep you up to date here on everything happening here on a daily basis. Click here to see Iran's threat to Americans, or you can click here to see my newest video next. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.